Good morning, everybody. Today I'm going to show a fun preview of the next version of TrueNOS Scale. So what you're seeing now is the dashboard of what the next iteration is going to be, which is called Fangtooth. You notice my IP is different because I'm running this in a separate VM. Uh, this is in alpha right now. This isn't even in beta, so it's looking a little broken, but that's okay. That's the way it's supposed to look when things are in alpha. They're still very heavily underdeveloped in, in under development. If you are interested in running this in a VM of yourself, if you've got Proxmox or if you've got another place that you want to set up VMs, um, I'm just going to show you really quick the first thing you're going to want to do once you get this installed is that's run updates. After I run these updates for you guys, I'm going to actually show you some of the changes that are going to occur in the next version of TrueNOS and why it's such a huge deal. So. If you're running this in a VM, you're going to want to apply your pending update. I'm not going to export my secret seed, and I'm not going to save my config. And the reason for that is this is just a test machine. If it doesn't work, I'll just download the new ISO and install it from scratch. It's no big deal. So I'm going to, yes, confirm this. It's going to download and restart. And after this is done, we're going to jump back in and look at the updates. Okay, we are back from our update. So you'll see our current train is TrueNOS Scale Fangtooth Nightly. So this is the next one. So let's go back to our dashboard. Oh, look at that. So the dashboard is now working. So from the last update that I had to this one, we now actually have a working dashboard. So what I'm going to show you guys today, uh, first off, just to confirm where we're at here, let's go to general settings. You'll see here, this is the community edition. And this is the master from 05637. This is the one that I have as of this recording. Um, if you come in anytime after this, you're probably going to see a lot more functionality like I see here. So let's talk about the big change. I'm just going to click through these tabs to show you guys there's not a whole lot of differences here in a lot of other places. This is the storage. This is the data sets. You'll see I have pretty much nothing here, so it's just a test machine. These are the shares. This is the data protection tab. Everything is basically the same. This is the networking tab. Credentials is completely the same. This is the old virtualization. This is the apps page, and you'll see I have just Nextcloud. Oh, it's running in here. It shouldn't be, but I'm just going to stop that. Um, I installed Nextcloud just to play with the apps to see if there's any differences there. Long story short, there's not. Um, the reporting tab is all the same. Is this going to work? This is going to work. Um, and the system stuff is all the same. This is the big change. This is the new virtualization tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete these two because I want to show you guys how I created them. This is from past virtualization. So what TrueNOS wants to do with the next update is go after anyone who does virtualization better than them, which is pretty much everyone. Uh, this is the old virtualization tab. We've complained about this for years and years. No one uses TrueNOS to run VMs. And the reason for this is it's just awful when you can have something like Proxmox. Proxmox is like the de facto standard of excellence when it comes to VMs and containerization through LXCs. So now that TrueNOS has Docker on the host, and that's getting updated, don't get me wrong, they want to be able to do kind of what Proxmox does. They want to be able to do VMs and LXCs similar to the way Proxmox does. So let's first off start off with how we would do just a basic VM as compared to the old web. So I'm going to start a VM. I'm going to call this, this is going to be my test Ubuntu VM, right? It says use a Linux container or upload an ISO image. I'm going to use a container image. And the reason for that is their catalog is actually pretty awesome. So let's come over here to browse catalog. Uh, and you'll see there's a lot of cool things. So I'm just going to scroll through here. There's a lot going on in this catalog. But I'm going to try and bring this down a little bit. Let's just say I want to use Ubuntu because I'm a huge Ubuntu fan. So this is all the versions of Ubuntu that are loaded here. So you can see we have variants here. Uh, we have releases here. Um, and that's, that's a little broken because Buster and Bullseye, this is for actually... Um, Debian, but I'm going to ignore that, and I can do a search image directly. So, for example, I wanted to search Focal, like you can see Focal right there. So the search image just works. Uh, so this is if you have to, if you know anything about Ubuntu, they go by letters. So F G H I J K L M O, etc. So Noble would be the equivalent of 24.04. Uh, so we're just going to pull the default image here, and I'm going to hit select, and that's it. So that's the image it's going to pull. Um, usually, you'd be able to leave these blanks. Okay, to use everything. So we're going to say um, four CPUs and uh, let's say 4,000 megabytes of memory. I believe this is in megabytes. Let's see. Yep. Uh, so we can just do it just like that. Let's do four gigabytes. Four gigabytes of memory, just like that. Uh, we're not going to add a disk. We're not going to add a proxy. We're going to use net everything default. I'm going to leave everything the same. So we have the option here to do a few things. You'll see the TPM, the VNCs, if you want to do that, um, which is cool for remote desktop. 
That's really cool. I didn't actually know. I'm going to actually click that and see if it's going to be in 5,900. I'm going to test that out. This is going to be brand new. I've never tested this before. And some of the stuff is new to me. But last time I had, uh, I ran this, this, these updates weren't built yet. This is heavily under development. So this is pretty much the instance. Let's go here and just create this instance. I'm going to create that VM. And you see right now it's going to download this uh, from the cloud at a great speed. So now we got that whole thing. It's going to unpack the image and create our new Ubuntu VM. And that was it. I'm not even going to have to fast forward that. All right, so this is running right now. So you can see here we have a, a shell and a VNC. This is this little tools thing is new. So let's shell in. Let's see if I can figure it out. That doesn't seem to be doing anything, but it's okay. Oh, here we go. Test Ubuntu login. There we go. Uh, root. I don't know what the actual pass. See, I don't know what the default is for the image they're using, so I don't know my own password, but this is actually working. So let's try and go back to virtualization. Let's click VNC. Let's open this link. So that's the VNC window that it gave me when I did it, which is basically the same thing. It just opened this using, in my computer, would be Remina, which is my local uh, client for remote desktop. But it's the same thing that I got for the show. But that's, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I just don't know these credentials to log in, unfortunately. So I can't help you guys with that. But yeah, I can tell you that this is a VM and it's indeed running. Uh, so that's how fast I set up this VM. Unfortunately, none of these metrics are working yet, but that's pretty cool, actually. So we can come in here. There's global settings for this, too. So, for example, I'm giving every, everything an IP on the 10-100 network, um, and it's on my tank bridge, on my tank pool right now. So I'm going to stop this really fast, and I'm going to wait for the container to shut down clean. This way we're not just sucking up resources. Uh, now let's do another one. So I know the LXC is actually working a little better. So this is a container, a container LXC. I'm going to call this test Ubuntu... LXC. Okay. I'm going to browse my image. Now, again, these are going to be the same thing as before. I want to do my OS for Ubuntu. And look, there's a lot more options here for LXCs. A lot more options. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do noble defaults uh, just like that. And I'm going to select that for my container. And now here's the really cool part for CPU and memory. If you leave this empty, it allows this container to dynamically use as much memory or CPU as it needs, which is exactly what I want it to do. I don't want to set those at all. I don't want to set any disks or proxies. I don't want to pass any USB devices in, but I have the option. If I wanted to pass a USB device in and it was detected here, I can just check the box. So we're going to hit create. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to download the image in the LXC and it's going to unpack it. And you can see this is in real time. I'm not fast forwarding. This is actually very, very snappy. That was it. So let's come over here to Ubuntu LXC. There we go. So CPU, all host CPUs, memory, all available host memory. This seems to be working. Well, now we're actually getting some metrics here for the LXC. So it seems they put in some work in the LXCs. The VMs are still a little behind, but that's okay. Um, let's shell in here because here we can actually be able to get a root. So now we're in root right now, right? So let's come over here at IP8. So there we go. We're at a 10-100, which is what I set it for. It put it at 225. Um, yeah. That's working. So let's um, do a who am I? And you name dash. Okay. So there we go. Test doing the LXC. This is a 6.29. There we go. Let's try this command. Okay. So this is what it downloaded 24.01.1. And we're going to run this command as well. And it's going to give us just a little more information. But it's basically the same thing. So this is, this is the version. So if I do an ls l. Uh, that's what it is. So you can see this is a full-on simulated Ubuntu virtual machine, but it's in a container. It's in an LXC, uh, which is great because this is a little bit lighter than a VM because it, it, we have resource sharing. So if you don't know the difference between an LXC and a VM, just very quickly, when I do a VM over my virtualization, I'm essentially lopping off a section of... Let's come over here. So I'm, I'm essentially saying I need C four CPUs and four gigabytes of memory for this VM, and it's going to allocate that, and it's going to kind of keep it in that little box, um, and it's going to it's going virtualize everything, including the kernel, which means anything above the hardware level, anything above the BIOS can be completely virtualized. The container doesn't do that. It's actually one step above the kernel. We are not virtualizing the kernel. We are sharing the kernel, and because we're sharing the lowest layer, it can be a lot less resource intensive resource intensive than a full VM, which has to virtualize the kernel. So that's really cool that we get to do that with an LXC. Um, it's interesting because now I don't see this working. Let's come over here. 
this was working before, and you guys saw that. But this is, again, this is an alpha release. Let's talk about um, the release schedule coming up because this is pretty important. So this is the nightly builds. This is the upgrade path. Now, I want to show you guys something really important here that is a big deal for Fangtooth besides the fact that it's going to do virtualization the way it's going to do it in the future. Uh, you'll see here, this is the core uh, train, uh, and this is the scale train. Now, core stopped at 13.0, uh, and everybody's like, this is going to be... And they've already told... IX Systems already announced that core will not get another update. But now they've just announced that core will get another update, and that anticipated update, as you follow this line, is Fangtooth. Which means if you're using TrueNAS Core, uh, your next update that you're going to see is going to be for 25.04 Fangtooth. This is considered going to be a new unified version of TrueNAS for Core and for Scale. It's not going to be there's not going to be a Core and a Scale anymore. And it's just going to be Fangtooth. So if you're on Electric Eel right now, 24.10.1, I'm going to show you the next update for that's going to be. This is going to be the next update in the path 25.04. So let's look at the release schedule here. This is our release schedule. So we're at 24.10.1 right now. The next update for Electric Eel is going to be 28 January. So four days from when I recorded this video, we're going to get 24.10.2. Uh, the beta for 25.04 is going to be, and it's the early release, is going to be 11 February. So I'm pretty early. Right now I'm recording this on January 24th. So we're well ahead of where the beta is. I'm hoping they're able to keep this going. By RC1, if you guys want to play with this, these are usually pretty safe versions. RC1 is usually pretty safe stable it's very similar to what the final version is actually going to look like rc1 stands for release candidate one um and of course the full stable release at 15 april so if you guys are thinking of playing with it i'd say pick one of these two dates either 11 february or 11 march and pick one of those versions and it's taking up very little resources right now so let's see what we have here our services are only running 1.5 gigs we're, we're, we're not taking up a lot of memory here i've only given this 9.5 gigs and we're only using what 1.9 for the cache and 1.5 for our services so this is this is barely taking up any footprint at all. I wish it was actually showing me what it was taking. Oh, wait. Yep. There we go. So now we're getting, we're doing a little bit better here, I think. So it's telling me right now, it's estimated it's taking, it's taking up 43 megabytes of memory to run this LXC right now. 43 megabytes. So, I mean, that's just incredible. Zero CPU, zero disk pressure. So there's really cool stuff here. Um... So this is all under development. I'm not even sure how much of this works and how much of it doesn't, but I kind of wanted to give you guys a sneak preview, like, hey, this is where we're going in the future when it comes to virtualization, which they're going to call, call containers. Um, and you saw how fast the instances were. So this is a really cool thing that I'm really looking forward to. I don't see myself stopping using Proxmox yet, but if TrueNOS continues down the path it does with the ability to do some really cool stuff with LXCs and virtualization, um, yeah, I can really see myself maybe going back down to one system. But I just wanted to show you guys kind of where it's going. Everything else is the same, but if you want to play with it, go out and grab the um, ISO image, which should be. Let's see if we can come over here. and follow. Here they are. So when you get here, you want to click on Obtaining a Release. And then you want to click to the TrueNOS download server. And here's all the nightlies. So the first thing you can do if you want to know which one you should get, this is organized by release. So the ones that are newest are on top. You want to scroll down. So the first one you see, it's actually got something sizable. So 64 bytes. These are just the, the SHAs. This is just the hashes. This is the first one that matters. 1.98 gigs. So this is an actual version. This is 05622.iso. Now, I already know I have this version because I updated. And you won't need to do this except for once. Because once you get the right ISO, uh, in this case, it would be that one. And you come over here and you go to system and then you go to update. Uh, it's going to take you. It'll automatically download the next one just like I showed you in the beginning of the video. But yeah, it's just a really quick preview of what's coming down the way. I encourage you to download the ISO and play with it yourself. Uh, just kind of get used to it, because this is kind of where we're going. I'm going to do a full video on the beta when the beta is out, when things are much more functional. Uh, but if you like what you see, subscribe to this channel, please. If you want to ask some questions, please ask them in the comments. If you really want to thank me, you can buy me a coffee.